with Rodney Kavnis, the new, uh, well, I should say technically the loan finalist to be superintendent of Texas City Independent School District. Uh, and hopefully in a few days will be the new superintendent. Thanks for coming on with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, first question to ask you right out of the bat. Why Texas City? Why did you choose you wanted to come here to be the next superintendent? I've been working in petrochemical cities my whole career, uh, pretty much except for Silsby. Tanya and I, my, Tanya, my wife, and I were attracted to the city. We liked the location. Uh, I liked the, the schools, uh, academically strong, financially strong, and, of course, athletically strong. And uh, we're leaving a, a great place where we have a lot of friends, and we're excited about coming, and we've been looking at homes, and it's a nice place. Was there something in particular, too, because of the recent merger or anything like that, that you were looking for maybe that there was a little bit of an extra challenge there with the larger district or anything like that that also appealed to you about the job? Well, I, th I think you want to look to larger districts to make a move, but you also want to look somewhere where you think you may be a good fit and where you can think you can contribute something, and I feel like I can. I think that the merger has been and will continue to be uh, somewhat of a challenge, but I've got a good track record of bringing people together and being able to talk to people and calming things down and moving an organization ahead. So we can do that. There's challenges ahead of us, but there are a lot of good things that I see. And I haven't, I haven't been here yet nor uh, been on the job yet. I know what I've read and what people have told me. And there's a lot of good out there and a lot of good people here. Met with some great groups of people uh, earlier in the week. And I, I feel like we got some good people here, and we can put some good things together. You talked about there are the there are the things you've seen. I know I know you haven't been able to spend spend much time down here so far, but what are kind of one or two things that you've seen already within Texas City ISD that you see? Oh, this school is doing this school district's doing it right. This is what we got to really boost and continue. I think the thing that sticks out in my mind the most is people love their town. They love their school. And they love people. We've talked. I've talked to a lot of people. Everybody's been very kind to me for the most part. And I think people love this place. There's a lot of tradition, and of course, there's challenges. But I think with any school district, there are. So we're excited about it. Met a lot of good people. Uh, talking about challenges, uh, no matter where you go, there's going to be some type of challenge that comes up. What What is these you look at as you see as the areas that got to be tackled right away? Or, you know, again, knowing that you haven't been able to get in, get into the weeds yet, yet, but just to kind of what are those things that you need to look at? You think, all right, we need to make sure we're tackling that and moving forward the challenges that go for this school district specifically. I think that unity is a big part of us being successful. I've talked to many people about about the annexation, it's mostly been positive. There's been some negative, and I'm sure there's some people out there that don't like it, but I've talked to many that do. Unity, we can't say Lamarck and Texas City were one big school district. My job is to come in and ensure that our kids are getting educated and taking care of our kids, every one of them. Uh, and talking about with that annexation, it, you know, the both communities have their own kind of unique identities. Uh, Lamarck, what was the Lamarck School District? It, the whole the district was the identity for that community because it was part Texas City, and part Lamarck. You have Texas City, a petrochemical industry, you know, town like you're familiar with, that's been pretty much a very close knit the whole time. And now you've you have this change that has taken place here. You know, at, as a leader of is moving into the second year of of this. You know, what do you see? You said early on, and I like to hear that line where you said you're you're used to bringing folks together and uniting them. What is your strategy on those type of things? What's your philosophy on trying to bring folks together on something that could be divisive, but at the same time is is for the best? Well, I think that uh, one imp one very important thing we got to celebrate what each town loves about their town and minimize divisiveness of course and i've explained to several groups this week that when we've got a problem or an issue don't let it get to the point to where we have an out of control public comment session and people are mad and people see that and we don't need that we need to to celebrate the good things in each of the communities in each of the school each of the high schools in the feeder patterns build on the good and take a hard look at what's broken and allocate resources and personnel and people to get it fixed. One of the things, too, is you, you come in uh, uh, replacing Cynthia Luzignolo, who's probably been one of the most communicative superintendents the still district's ever seen. 
particularly this past year because she had to get out there on the road and everything else. Explain your communication style uh, of for folks who may not, as you said, uh, you addressed it, said let's let's work this out beforehand. But explain your communication style and philosophy. My communication style is it's, it's what you see is what you get. I, there's not a lot of fluff going to come out of my mouth. I probably am a little too direct sometimes and can probably use some uh, training from Melissa and, and polish my style a little bit. But I believe in being straightforward with people and talking to them. I don't like sitting in my office. They're going to see me at the grocery store at Little League all over the place. And I just like getting out and meeting people and visiting and, and letting everybody know what their role in this process is. So it pr pretty much a straight-up style. I like talking to people. I'm not a big uh, Twitter person or Facebook person or a texter. So uh, I just like talking to people, enjoy people, and uh, feel like I can, I can talk to the CEO at a international refinery and it, or I can talk to a guy down the street that's working on his truck. I'm just a normal guy. I'm a dad and a husband and just, just a normal guy who, you know, loves kids and wants the best for children. So I'll be out and about. They'll see me around, and uh, I'm sure I'll take some two-hour trips to the grocery store that should take five minutes. So, well, it, in fact, uh, as we do this interview, you talk about being out and around. You're going to be heading over to the Taste of the Town or the Chamber right off the bat, so you're not wasting any time to make sure you go get to see a big crowd. Right, and I'm not going to pass up some good food. My wife and I are huge foodies, and uh, we consider ourselves some pretty good Cajun chefs, so I'm going to go and meet some people and shake some hands and, and ask a lot of questions and um, taking Tanya with us. and uh, President Campbell is going to walk us around, so we're excited about that. We just want to get down here and meet everybody and, you know, the moving process and all that business. I'm trying not to think about that right now, so... Uh, <laughs> But, it, you know, at the same time, uh, Dr. Lucignolo has done a, good, a great job. And uh, I want to come around enough to meet people, but I don't ever want her to feel like I'm in here trying to push her aside because I'm certainly not. You know, that she may just put you to work right away before waiting. <laughs> she, she's, she's pretty tough. I, I might ought to stay away. She may put me doing something. Clarify when he was talking about Melissa earlier. He was talking about Melissa Tortorici, who's the communications director uh, for the school district here. You talked about being a straight shooter, that you see what you get, and you may be a little rough on the edges when you talk. Let's go ahead and address what was an issue early on here, uh, and it was your comments as, right after uh, what was then President Obama's administration, the directive of the transgender bathroom uh, issue. That's caused some concerns. You you did something the other night, and my people may not know about it. You went ahead and addressed that issue at the school board meeting the other night, went into the public comments and trusted. Let's talk about that, just, you know, not to rehash, you know, why did you do it or anything like that, but just talk about, you know, does that reflect on who you truly are? Because uh, some folks took that as, to, as comments of when you say, not my president. And like, just talk about that incident and how you, you've addressed it since then, how you addressed it to the board the other night. The, I caught a lot of heat about that from the very beginning and caught a lot of positive comments from people on it also uh, wasn't my best moment I could have chosen better words it was not an interview that I was doing when I said that it was not a a newspaper interview it, it doesn't erase the fact that it happened I was open and honest with the board in both of my interviews I was open and honest and genuine with very uh, three four great groups of people from both communities and I told them what happened and asked for their forgiveness, and they said that they can work with me and support me, and I feel like they're telling me the truth. Uh, I, I was caught off guard when the guy called. I've known the guy for a long time. He had asked me to come do an interview. I said, sure. I was eating dinner off the cuff, and uh, wish I would have said it different, but I didn't, and I'm not denying it. And if I hurt some people's feelings, I've apologized to them. And I'm looking ahead. And, and not looking back. We got a lot of good things going on in this district, but there's a lot of work to be done, and I'm eager to get here and get to work. Uh, should ask, though, uh, uh, coming in, if someone were to still have a concern based on that, and you know, and they want to be able to hear from you directly, you know, a heartfelt way, are you open to that of having such, you know, I know it's unfair to have you over and over again publicly, but if someone wanted to sit down with you. Yeah. Anybody can come talk to me at any time. And if they want to just visit with me, that's fine. If, I mean, if they've got a problem with something that's going on on a campus level or something like that, I may re redirect them for a discipline issue or whatever. But 
people are going to find out that I'm very approachable. I'm not a big mean guy. I may look like it, but I'm just not. I'm very approachable. They can talk to me at any time. I expect that, and I and I would expect it from a superintendent. Uh, my kids were going to school there also. They can come talk to me, and I'll tell them what happened. And I've told it over and over and over again, and I told the truth, and it's what happened. And I wish I could take it away, but you can't. It's, it's just a lesson you have to learn on your own. Switching to a more lighthearted subject. Sure. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, uh, how much uh, orange and black and how much blue and gold do you have in your closet already? And I'm sure it's about to get a lot more. See? <laughs> I've got some blue and gold. I've got some very nice ties, a couple very nice suits from my tailor. Uh, I've got some hit and miss orange, but we did get two very nice ties about two weeks ago. So I will give my purple stuff away, and I will acquire some orange and black and some blue and gold. And I, it, it is blue and gold. I don't want to say blue and yellow and get fussed at it because I know how important that is. But uh, got, got some blue and gold. I got to add to my orange, and uh, I'll get with the coaches and get uh, a couple of coaching shirts where I can go to the games. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be dressed looking good, though. They'll know where I'm from. Uh, and on that, too, should point out that they're, for a good while in the playoff runs for Lamarck, particularly, they ran into P&G a couple of times, and uh, it was not always the most pleasant thing for the Lamarck Cougar fans at the time. They were really good football teams then. Yeah, when I was at Silsby, about 95 or 6, I guess, we met Lamarck in, in the Dome, I think. And we were unable to block their, off, their defensive linemen, and it didn't go too good for us. But they had a heck of a program and good, tough, strong kids that could run and – I think since I've been at PNG, we we either scrimmaged over here or played early in the season. And I I remember driving down Palmer, and you better slow down. There's people everywhere, and uh, it tells me there's a good strong tradition over here, and people follow their teams. And I think Friday night's huge. That's when you showcase your your school and your district, and that's how you get people out and you know build a community and do things of that nature. So uh, we're excited. You started off as a coach. A lot of folks said, nah, I don't want to deal with that. I just want to stay on the field. Or what drew you to the administrative side of things? I, I felt like from early on that I wanted to be in, in a more uh, rigorous leadership position than that as a teacher or a coach. And I, I got a lot of respect for coaches. And I, I could not deal with the 90 to 100 hour work weeks during football season. I need to fish and hunt a little bit and barbecue and uh, be at home with my wife and my kids. And that's why I got so much respect for them because I couldn't do it. And I uh, went straight through and got my master's and had a good opportunity in another district and went straight on through and worked on the doctorate and worked my way up and had some good successes and have had some failures. and. I just have always been a leader and wanted a more responsible leadership role, and they kept coming. So it's been good. It's it's usually I tell people it's nine really good days, and one day you better be pretty tough. So uh, you mentioned it in there because that was going to be the next question about uh, you want to go out and hunting and fishing and everything else. Uh, so what are what are your hobbies? What what type of fishing do you like to do? You know the Texas City Dyke here is Galveston Bay. Uh, and uh, what type of hunting so folks can get to know you a little bit better on that level of things. I love deer hunting in South Texas, like any kind of fishing. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I enjoy cooking and barbecuing. And, uh, you know, the best day for me is having all the kids at home and, and just being out back around the pool and barbecuing and pretty much doing nothing, listening to music. And uh, we have a grandbaby. Everything I do uh, surrounds my family. I used to hunt and fish a lot. I uh, hunt and fish a lot less now. And uh, I may take a couple trips to South Texas, but uh, the lease thing and all that, it's just its too much coming and going. And the job's demanding, and, and you need some time, just uh, just some quiet time at your house where you don't have a whole lot to do. So, But cooking is big for my wife and I, and uh, eating good. And hey, You said y'all you pride yourselves of being great Cajun chefs. Tell us a little bit about that, because uh, there would be some folks around here that may take you up on that challenge. <laughs> just, you know, you know, how did you? Obviously, you know, going triangle area and stuff that that that, that Cajun influence. But uh, what, what, you know, what's your, what's your best dish? I should ask. Mine, I think my tapas, my grilled tapas, things I make on the grill are the best. I can make good gumbo, but Tanya is the gumbo chef. 
So any kind of etouffee, whatever, whatever y'all want, we can cook it. So sounds like it'll be an auction item for the foundation for the future. Is to have uh, have you two like cook a meal for a party or something like that. We can do that. Those competition gumbo pots that she cooked, they're you can get up to about four hundred dollars on on one pot if you're making it right. So. She can do it, though. She's serious about it, then. So, well, welcome. Uh, hopefully everything works out for you here. What What is something that you'd like to be able to tell the community here now that you're coming in um, that maybe they haven't heard from you yet or you know, maybe it's been out there but they haven't heard it widespread? What would you like to be able to tell them right now? I just want to tell them that this is uh, – being a superintendent's not some type of status symbol for me or, or some kind of game. It's serious business, and I think that we get kids – and we have them for 13 or 14 years, and we got to get it right the first time. And my job always has been and is now to educate kids and take good care of our teachers and, and build the communities and build e economic development and contribute to that and make our schools so good that people will not tell us the truth about their address so they can get in here. That's how good we're going to get. And uh, I'm glad it's, it's left in good shape when I take over, and I'm very thankful for the board, past boards, and Dr. Lucignolo for that, but uh, I'm just a, a dad and a husband and very approachable and people can talk to me and I've got a range of, you know, interests outside my job that, that uh, keep me sane on those very stressful days. So I see a lot of potential. I think that uh, working with the refineries is, is one of my strengths and financial accountability and academics and we could always do better in academics and where i've been we could always do better but i'm just i, I don't get complacent and i'm not going to get complacent i feel like i've got uh, many more good years left in me and uh, and i'm willing to put it on the line for texas city isd uh that, that wasn't the last question but you mentioned about working with energy had a chance to tour the new industrial trade center yet I have not, and uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of questions about a lot of things, and once I get here and, and start getting out and meeting people and traveling around, I think I'll have a lot better answers for people or a lot more accurate answers. So uh, we're excited. We're excited, and uh, Tanya's out looking around right now. So we're excited to come. Mamie Grace is excited to come, and she's excited to play seventh grade volleyball. And we'll uh, and we'll see how that goes too. Uh, that's right. Your youngest is still in school. That's uh, to point out. The rest of your of your children are are grown. Yes, uh, uh, Larray's uh, graduated A and M about five years ago. Married and to a, to a Aggie and Lauren graduated three years ago uh, with a chemistry degree. Set to go to dental school or medical school and went to Florida to be a professional skier. Perfect. So, uh, uh, Bailey, uh, daughter, is uh, lives in Lumberton and works. And Gavin, my son, will graduate from Marine Boot Camp on the 27th, 28th, something like that. So we'll be in San Diego for that. Cooper is my little artist, and Mamie Grace is the baby. So outnumbered. I was gonna say you are, yeah, yeah, and took it to and thank you for your family uh, for having a son who serves. That's uh, that's great. All right, Rodney Kavnis is the uh, soon to be new superintendent, Texas City ISD. Thanks for being on with us here today. We do appreciate you taking the time.